they've never experienced anything like it. It's very hard to explain how loud it can get. You can't even talk to someone who's right next to you by screaming. That's the only way I can describe how loud it was. The Amazon rainforest in Brazil. It's one of the last great wilderness areas, home to the largest variety of insects, birds, and mammals in the world. For Dave Boyer and Crystal Ramsey, it's the trip of a lifetime. Can you believe it? We're actually here in the Amazon. Hey, you know when I make a promise, I keep it. It's the realization of a dream they shared two years ago when they were a couple. Crystal and I dated for about three years and really were the closest you could possibly be. One day we were talking about our passions and I asked her the question, if you could go any one place in the world, where would that be? And the Amazon was number one for both of us. Dave and Crystal aren't together anymore, but they are still close friends. There was no one I would have rather gone with than him. Dave and Crystal set off in the morning with enough water for a three-hour hike. We left just before 10 o'clock and expected to be back in time for a lunch, late, a late lunch. We had tunnel vision. We were focused on one thing, and that was exploring and seeing the rainforest. We were oblivious to any dangers that were involved. They are so absorbed by the sights and sounds of the forest, they don't notice that they've stepped off the marked trail. Our awareness was elsewhere. It was on the trees, on the animals, on the sounds. The map Dave left behind was a hand-drawn sketch of the area. He clearly remembers it showing the lodge at the bottom, which would normally indicate that it lies to their south. But the map isn't laid out in the usual way. To get back to the lodge, they actually need to head north. If we head south, that should take us back. You're sure? I'm sure. I'm sure. OK? Come on, let's go. Hiking south is the worst decision Dave could make. Ahead, there lies nothing but thousands of miles of rainforest. Uninhabited, except for rainforest creatures, many of them highly dangerous. If we'd been walking in the right direction for this long, we would have I know, I know. I don't think he wanted to deal with it. He didn't want to deal with even having to think about sleeping out there. I was frustrated at myself. I felt responsible for getting us lost and felt responsible for finding the way back. Chris, I am so sorry about this. I sh It's OK. You buy me a beer when we get back, and we'll call it even, OK? OK. But they both know how vulnerable they really are. The rainforest is teeming with nocturnal predators. A lot of the poisonous snakes, they wander through the forest at night. The jaguar comes out at night. You don't have a lot of choices of protection. Dave and Crystal share a single thought. Can they make it through the night alive? Or is there something? Dave and Crystal have survived the night unscathed, almost. I'm covered in mosquito bites. Be grateful that's all that bit you. <laughs> Very funny. So, what's the plan? Well, Dave needs to get them back to the lodge fast. Crystal's on medication for her depression, and he knows she doesn't have her drugs with her. By mid-afternoon, Dave is resorting to a new desperate tactic in his search for the lodge. 
I was trying to keep us in the same area of where we got lost and kind of zigzagging back and forth, hoping to stumble upon the trail. Let's try over there. Crystal was starting to get a little bit frustrated with, with that strategy. Dave was literally almost walking in circles and didn't realize that that's what he was doing. Crystal is starting to feel the pressure. My brain was saying, things are going, things are going downhill. As darkness falls, they realize they must endure another night. I was tired. I had not slept on the previous night. I was being driven insane by the mosquitoes. They were constantly biting me, making our bodies itch, and, and we would scratch it to the point where our bodies would start bleeding. The next day, they're still heading in the wrong direction getting even further away from the area where rescuers are searching for them. I thought that it would be nice, it might even be comforting if we had some type of shelter. So we came up with the idea of making a teepee. Yeah. It was drawing us closer together. She told me that if I was as I was while we were lost, if we had always had that relationship in that past year, that we would still be together. She saw all the things that she had fallen in love with in the first place. It looks good. We were trying to get our minds off of what we were going through, and we got even closer. My feelings had not changed since the day I met her. I was still in love with her. I still wanted her to be in my life. And, and with me forever. But Dave couldn't be more wrong. A massive tropical thunderstorm is building in the skies above them. And it's about to put them in the greatest danger yet. They've never experienced anything like it. It's very hard to explain how loud it can get. You can't even talk to someone who's right next to you by screaming. That's the only way I can describe how loud it was. They are soaked within seconds. It was the coldest I had ever been. Couldn't stop, my body was just going into convulsions and shaking, and my teeth were chattering. Any hope of sleep is gone. Their terrible night leaves both of them exhausted and miserable. But it's pushed Crystal close to the edge. I think my own mind was more dangerous than anything that the jungle had. All I had was a companion, and she was what kept me going. I needed her as much as she needed me to make it through this, and, and I, I could not drag her the, the entire time. 24 hours later, Dave and Crystal's situation is bleaker than ever. They are still hopelessly lost. And as their fifth night approaches, it's Dave who's struggling. Drained by lack of sleep and the effort of keeping Crystal going, he desperately needs rest. Dave was exhausted. I was very worried about him, but I, there was nothing I could do to make him sleep. I could not get a grip. I could not get control of what I really needed, and that was to get to sleep. In his totally exhausted state, the insects soon become an obsession. The only way to get me through that night was to find a way to, to keep moving, keep myself occupied. Dave is beginning to lose his grip on reality.
I felt like I had lost this battle between me and the mosquitoes, between me and the night, between me and any sleep that I might get. For the first time, Dave thinks they might not make it out of the Amazon alive. He begins to search for water to wash himself. As we fought through some of the underbrush, when we got down there, there wasn't a creek, there wasn't a puddle. There was a flooded forest. Everywhere that we could see, there was water. It's a glimmer of hope, just enough to keep them going. This water's got to be somewhere. In the Amazon, rivers are like roads. If this water leads to a river, they might just spot a boat. They put aside thoughts of suicide. I got this surge of energy and some anger that made me want to fight through the water even more. As we were going through the flooded forest, we, we kept telling each other, don't, don't talk about any hopes. Just go, and go as fast as you can. Dave, look! I thought to myself, I've gotta be hallucinating. I said, Dave, am I really seeing that? You know, is that really real? <gasps> and he said it was. Hey! 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 He didn't wave back at us. It seemed like he was miles away. We immediately just started screaming, help, help, help. Help me, please. Respond. We learned in one split second that we were going to live. screaming and crying and just definitely the best moment I've ever had in my life.